Uruguay's President Jose Mujica was speaking to press uh, from Brazil, and he was talking about how he wants to legalize marijuana. This is a story that we did cover here on the Young Turks. The reason why he wants to legalize marijuana is because he wants to take the power away from the drug cartels and ensure that people who do want to smoke marijuana get it from the government instead. And he is planning on selling it for a very, very cheap price. Yes. Um, so basically, it'll drive business away from these cartels. Now, during the interview, he did talk a little bit about other countries that are pressuring him to keep marijuana illegal. Two of those countries are Brazil and the United States. Um, now, the United States is no surprise. Brazil is really no surprise either, especially when you consider that their drug laws haven't really made much sense. They've been uh, criminalizing drugs for a very long time, such as the United States. And uh, as a result, uh, drug violence is very high. Drug consumption is very high. And I want to read you a little bit about what Jose Mujica said. We ask the world to help us create this experience. It will allow us to adopt a socio-political experiment to address the serious problem of drug trafficking. The effect of the drug traffic is worse than the drug, which is something that we've been arguing over and over again. So I love that you have a leader of a country who is trying to do the same thing that we'd like to do here in the United States. Jose Mujica is a runaway, my favorite leader in the world. I mean, what a great guy. He gives away 90% of his salary, and it's not because he's a rich guy. He li lives in his, like, a, this almost shack, this little house in, 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 on his farm. And he's like, look, I'm here to serve the people. Like, here in America, uh, ironic because we're supposed to be the birthplace of democracy, we've forgotten what democracy is. Like, a regular guy in America can't run for office, mm -hmm. right? Can you imagine, like, a construction worker, like, oh, I'm, I'm going to be your representative, yeah. right? Yeah. People, are, yeah, that's a good one, right? And here's a regular guy, and he's really representing his people. And he's saying, and the reason why this is a, a big story now is he's saying, look to the rest of the world, one, help a brother out, okay? Yeah. We're trying to do this experiment. Like, work with us for a second instead of trying to, like, crush it in its infancy so that we can see if it works out better. But here's like, so, like, Brazil is super ironic because they're like, well, we have this terrible drug gang problem, so obviously we can't agree with you. But he's saying, no, 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 you're missing my point. Your real problem is the drug gang problem, and that perhaps if you legalize it, it'll get better, not worse. I think that it has a lot more to do with foreign aid, okay? And the United States usually gives foreign aid with many conditions, and one of those conditions is you have to continue criminalizing drugs like marijuana. So I don't know how much foreign aid the United States gives to Uruguay, but I know that they give foreign aid to many other countries, and if you have those types of, you know, those types of standards, then countries aren't going to disagree with that. And the reason why the United States, and the reason why Brazil, uh, don't want this type of uh, legislation to pass in uh, Uruguay is because it will prove them wrong. I mean, you saw that happen in Portugal. You see that happen in the Netherlands, even though in the Netherlands it's not legal, but it, you know they don't actually enforce their drug laws. So I I'm, I'm curious to see what happens. I think Uruguay will actually legalize marijuana. It already passed in the legislature's uh, lower house. It's expected to pass um, uh, in, the in the Senate as well. And then, of course, the president is going to sign it. He's very supportive of it. Yeah, and it, it's fascinating. They're doing a particular s strain of marijuana so that you can track track it back to Uruguay. Yeah, and so they're saying in the on the molecular level, you'll be able to tell. So he, like, the one of the ideas is oh, it'll run amok, and then it'll be everywhere. He's like, well, we're going to track that. It's an experiment, okay? So we're even doing that for you guys. And Anna's right, man. All these countries aren't going along with our ridiculous war on drugs for their health. Okay, they're going along because we're doing carrots and sticks, and behind the scenes, we're saying, hey, that aid you're getting, that's how we bribe countries into complying with our standards. You either play ball, or I'm going to take away millions, hundreds of millions, in some cases, some extreme cases in, in the Middle East, billions of dollars, right? So, and, and that's how they get everybody to go along with this, even though it makes no sense and almost every one of them knows it makes no sense because the minute they leave office, they all go, oh man, god damn, that war on drugs is such a yeah. bad idea. And another thing to keep in mind, we love to pay private contractors when it comes to the so-called war on terror, right? But we also pay private contractors to enforce the war on drugs, especially in Latin America. So this is not something that the United States is in favor of at all because we have private contractors that stand to lose a significant amount of money if these countries start legalizing marijuana. You know what they should do? Start weed farms. Make a lot of money that way.
<laughs> but I do think that it's funny that as we're doing this, and the State Department reply, uh, replied to what the President said by saying, you have to comply with international laws that stop you from, from doing this, that instantly they shut it down. But at the same time, over the past few years, like we've seen public opinion about marijuana legalization in America change drastically, way faster than anyone would have expected 10 years ago. And it's becoming, becoming legalized for medicinal and recreational use in an increasing number of states. And it just, it seems so obvious to us, and I don't think that I'm being naive to think that it will obviously change nationally in America. We just don't know what year that will be, if it'll be two years or 10 years or 20 years. And it makes me think of John Kerry's speech about v Vietnam, that after we already knew it was a mistake, how many more people had to die? And when we know, they know it's not working, maybe they believed in the 60s or maybe even the 70s that the drug war could work, but they know today that it will not work. And people are dying all over the world, in Latin America, in Mexico, because of the drug war. And in America, people are going to jail because of this. How many more people need to die because of the cartels after we already knew it was a mistake? 70,000 in Mexico alone since 2006, after Calderon pa um, launched this war on drugs there, right? I mean, they've always criminalized drugs there, but he's like, no, we're going after the cartels. Yeah, 70,000 people since 2006, that's insane. So, so I was at a party recently, and I was uh, having a scotch, and uh, someone else was having a martini, and I was, there was a cop there, and he was drinking some beer. And uh, they were talking about marijuana, and he's upset that it's being legalized. And uh, this is literally what he said as an L.A. cop. And I said, well, you're sitting there drinking. Isn't that a little hypocritical? Because we all know that causes more problems than uh, marijuana, which is what I'm going to step out and smoke in a second. <laughs> and uh, he said, uh, he said, this is true. He said, uh, well, if I pull, the, uh, if your sister got killed and I stop a car and the killer of their, your sister's in that car and I smell marijuana, I can't stop him and search him now. I go, so you're telling me if we legalize marijuana, the guy who kills my sister is not going to go to jail? <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> That's how their mind works. Mm -hmm. So this is literally what he said. They just see it as another way to get into your criminal activity. Like, oh, I smell pot. Now I can stop your car. I can arrest you. I can search you. I can do all that. So they don't even care that marijuana shouldn't be illegal. They just like that it's a tool that they can use to get into your life. I just love how they think, A, that you can't regulate marijuana, that if you make it legal, it's like the wild, wild west. Like, mm -hmm. I don't even know if that reference makes sense mm -hmm. in this, in this yes. contents. But like, that people are just gonna be smoking spliffs in the back of their cars or, or whatever, behind the wheel as they're driving their kids to school. That's not what's gonna happen, it's gonna be regulated. And by the way, cops get to search your vehicle regardless. They'll find a way, yeah, sure. so, regardless yes. of whether or not there's any type of controlled substance in that car. And they have sobriety tests. Get yeah. the person out, and if he's high, and he can't walk, and he can't touch his nose, then you can take him in in the same way that you can if he's if he drank too much yeah. or if, if that doesn't work and it turns out that people who smoke still can't do all that stuff then it's probably not affecting their driving that much but could you imagine all the car accidents that are gonna happen from marijuana at five miles an hour <laughs> <laughs>